Namaste. Today I am going to speak on care of dying person. Myself Dr. Geeta Joshi, I am Chief Executive Officer at Community Oncology Center and Hospice Complex, which is managed by the Gujarat Cancer Society in Ahmedabad, Gujarat. Management of terminal phase is very important in achieving good death. In palliative care, we do not speak about only good life or quality of life, but we also talk about good death and quality of death. The terminal phase or the phase of actively dying is the period when day to day deterioration, particularly of strength appetite and awareness are occurring. During this phase, there is increasing will weakness, immobility, loss of interest in food, drink and surrounding and difficulty in swallowing and drowsiness. This includes managing the common terminal symptoms and providing the psychosocial and spiritual support to person and family. With an incurable, uh, incurable disease and progressive is illness, this phase is unavoidable and actually usually it is anticipated. So, when it is anticipated, you can plan a care for that this dying patient either at home or in hospital or in at hospice. Sometimes deterioration is sudden and distressing. Priority now is control of symptoms for comfort to the person and support to family. The nature of primary illness is now less important. What is important is in given situation, it, you make patient as comfortable as possible, relieve his symptoms and relieve the anxiety of the family. So, levels of anxiety, stress and emotion is high for patient, family and other carers also. So, healthcare team must adopt a sensitive yet, yet a structured approach to solve this problem. So, principles of care of dying includes a clinical based analytic approach to symptom control which should continue, it is a part of continuum of care given throughout the course of the disease and avoid unnecessary intervention, this is most important. When the person is suffering from critical illness, uh, uh, life limiting illness, at this stage when he is, the process of dying is started, there is no point going for an active intervention like uh, uh, doing some blood in test or submitting him for the CT scan or MRI or uh, taking him to ICU etcetera. Drugs should be reviewed and discontinued, which are not those which are not relevant anymore. Reg regular medical review for symptom control, including route of providing uh, medication, which should be changed now. Ex excellence in nursing care is priority as comfort comes from the good nursing. So, comfort is more important, caring is more important than curing now. Assess and support the coping by family and carers and maintain effective communication and assure that you are always available to support the patient and family. So, what, what do patients with serious illness want? When patient having life limiting illness, chronic illness, what they want most is the first of all the distressing symptoms like pain and symptom should be controlled. Avoid inappropriate prolongation of drying process by giving oxygen or taking him to ICU, do not prolong the life anymore because life is likely to end now, there is no point in continuing the same. Achieve a sense of control and relieve burdens on family strengthen relationship with loved one. Common terminal symptoms, towards the when patient is dying, there are many symptoms 
which are very distressing, annoying and affect the quality of life. The most imp uh, important of them are pain, breathlessness, dryness of mouth, noisy moist breathing. Sometimes there are so much secretion in the mouth and this secretion gets collected at the, uh, at the, uh, in the oral cavity and with the, uh, neither patient can spit it out not he can swallow. And along with breathing it gives a typical noise which is called death rattle. So, nursing uh, doctor and paramedical staff should be able to identify this noise and inform the family then the now the death is approaching and the patient is dying. Then there will be restlessness, sometimes confusion, delirium very common in terminally dying patient, nausea, vomiting and severe hemorrhage from a cancerous wound uh, or a patient who are having clotting abnormality, uh, they can have a severe hemorrhage and seizures that is convulsion. What is the incidence of these common symptoms towards end of life? This death rattle noise noisy moist breathing is in for almost 50 to 56 percent, urinary symptoms, pain, pain is very very common maybe 26 to 99 percent of the patient feel some or other pain, around 50 percent of the patients are restless, dyspneic and nausea vomiting is also again common almost in 70 percent of the patient profound weakness, they cannot get up from the bed, they cannot change their position, they cannot talk that is also very common almost in 82 percent of the patient. Muscle twitching and confusion because of lack of oxygen is also very common. So, first of all how to control pain? Most of the pain control is achieved by WHO three step ladder drugs almost 90 percent of them will be relieved by this guideline and by giving uh, drugs gi given on this guideline. Continue oral medication as far as possible, but if it is not possible patient is not able to swallow, you can switch over to subcutaneous route of injection. This subcutaneous route is uh, preferred in this patient because sometimes venous excess is not possible in this patient because they have undergone so many chemotherapy and so many uh, IV fluid therapy uh, during their treatment. N alternate rule is therapeutic patches we, uh, which is available for few drugs like fentanyl, diclofenac, lidocaine, uh, but they are costly. And at uh, in terminal stage when the skin circulation is slow, these patches may not be effective. So, the preferred route is subcutaneous route. Usually these patient require morphine to control their pain and frequent review of the this uh, medical medication whatever you are giving uh, is required regarding their dosage, regarding their timings and regarding the uh, rescue dose or extra medication for the breakthrough pain. For pain on movement adding NSAIDs is helpful and for colic pain buscopan is given and for skeletal muscle spasm diazepam is given. So, pain is managed by the WHO ladder by morphine, maybe you might have to give by subcutaneous route and many adjuvant drugs are required. Non-drug measures are also important in relieving pain, sometimes massage or sometimes some physiotherapy modalities. Mouth care uh, will reduce the mucositis pain of the mouth, pressure sore if it is managed properly by with a local anesthetic gel and uh, uh, antibiotic dressing, it will reduce the pain. Catheterization may also be needed to keep the person comfortable as diaper may be used and changed frequently if the uh, to keep the patient the person dry. Second important symptoms in dying patient is breathlessness. Here 
first of all you should try the non drug measure. So, first and foremost is propped up position with support to back and head, elevate the head end of the patient. Fresh air, he sh the patient should be, patient's cot should be moved near the window where he can get fresh air or with fan blowing on his face. Low dose morphine is very, very helpful in reducing the breathlessness as it, cu it cut down the anxiety part and reduces the breathing system. So, low dose morphine, it should be given uh, regularly and, and as per requirement. For panic episode, anxiolytic like sub, uh, uh, such as sublingual lorazepam is very helpful. For dry cough and sticky secretion nebulizer with saline is advised. If patient is on di di uh, heart failure, you can give diuretics like Lasix because, uh, because heart failure also gives causes breathlessness. Oxygen may be tried in hospital setting, but not always practical at home and sometimes in this terminal breathlessness, oxygen may not help. In spite of oxygen, the saturation does not improve and patient may feel discomfort because of that oxygen mask or oxygen cannula. So, it is better to avoid as far as possible and sometimes may not required. Talking to patient, family member, explaining them to the situation, calming presence and relaxation techniques are very, very helpful in this patient to reduce the breathlessness. Third important is noisy breathing, which we have said, we, we, as I said earlier, it is called death rattle. It is important to note that this is not causing distress to the person. Sometimes uh, family members becomes very anxious listening to this noise and they feel their pa patient or their uh, pa person is in distress, he is uncomfortable. But actually the person who is dying, he, they do not know about this noisy breathing and they are not uh, aware about it. So, they may feel that the person is suffering or, or with every breath. A simple explanation will help and this explanation is that the person is too weak to swallow their own secretion which then pull at back of the throat and cause a gurgling sound when air moves over it. The person may be repositioned to allow the secretion to trickle out. You can move the person on its size so the secretion will trickle out or you can mop the secretion with the gauze piece or you can do suction. A drug like glycopyrrolate is helpful to reduce the secretion. Another symptom is dryness of mouth and this gives discomfort to the person. It is often present due to mouth breathing and as a side effect of medicine, many medicine causes dryness of mouth and this can, uh, it may be a side effect of that. And this is uh, different from thirst and being dehydrated. So, family members are anxious that he is thirsty and we are not able to give him water. Uh, so, they become disturbed, but it is not so. It only needs frequent waiting to keep the mouth moist and frequent mouth care is required. Confusion and delirium, naturally the person who is dying and not breathing properly, his oxygen level will be low and the brain also has low oxygen tension. And this becomes very distressing for person and family and difficult to manage especially at home. Here you correct the cause if possible. Drugs which causes confusion are opioids that is narcotic drugs like morphine, steroids, alcohol, benzodiazepines and you should review the dose of the drugs or you may disconnect or reduce the dose of these drugs. Physical problem like pain, full bladder, 
bowel uh, immobility, infection and brain lesion may cause confusion. Try to correct the po possible cause. Metabolic upset like uremia, cal hypercalcemia, sodium glucose imbalance, hypoxia, try to rule out them. Anxiety and disease may be considered and managed and general supportive measures such as light reassurance and company are useful and medication to calm this patient like haloperidol or lorazepam can be given. Sometimes the dying patient is very restless and agitated and this is very distressing for the family members. The dying person may not be aware about it. So, this is very difficult and distressing symptom to manage and often requires palliative sedation. At this stage, what you need is a to sedate the patient. It is used to control the agitation, but in the process death may hasten and this is explained by the principle of double effect. So, palliative sedation is distinct from euthanasia. So, to treat this agitation you may sedate the patient, but the dying process is already initiated and patient person may die during this sedative phase only, but you may feel that it is because of your sedative drug, but it is not so. This is called double effect, you are giving the drug to prevent a uh, cure a symptom in turn death may prevail. So, the intention of giving this drug is to relieve the symptoms to improve the quality of death and not to bring uh, not to cause death itself. So, this is different from euthanasia. In euthanasia the aim is to kill and here the aim is to relieve the suffering. That is why it is called principle of double effect and it should not be misunderstood as euthanasia. In terminal stage as I said patient may not be able to swallow, you may not be able to give the any injection intravenously. In this case the roots available are sublingual, you just put any medicine under the tongue, rectal suppository in form of rectal insertion of the drug, morphine also can be given through, re through rectal root, subcutaneous injection and serine drivers if available. Serine drivers is a de device, it is a pump like which continuously gives medication in subcutaneous root. So, you take a subcutaneous cannula, connect it to serine driver and you can continuously give the medication. What is the difference between palliative sedation and euthanasia? In palliative sedation, drugs are given to relieve suffering and provide comfort. In euthanasia, the drugs are, drugs are given to relieve suffering and terminating the life. In palliative sedation, intention is to provide comfort, in euthanasia intention is to terminate life. Palliative sedation is a where death occurs, it is a natural process which is allowed to continue. And here in euthanasia natural process is interfered with and you are hastening the death. In palliative sedation, sanctity of life is always upheld and in euthanasia sanctity of life is overlooked. By giving palliative sedation death may be hastened and in euthanasia death is always accelerated, actively accelerated. In palliative sedation ethically justifiable, ethically you are allowed to do that and part of good palliative care 
and the, because the intention is to give good death and relieve suffering. In euthanasia, desperate response to suffering when no good palliative care is available. When palliative care services are not available, one can opt for euthanasia. Very few countries has legally uh, declared euthanasia a right thing to do. Another distressing symptoms in dying person is nausea and vomiting. Previously used antiemetics may be used, but required to be given subcutaneously or IV route because patient cannot take orally. Sometimes more than one drug is required and drugs like metacloprolide, haloperidol and ondansetron are often used as a single drug or in combination. Many of the patient do get convulsions towards the end of life. It is advisable to prevent seizure by continuing with oral anticonvulsant as far as possible. If he had history of an convulsion previously and he is on the medication, continue those medicine. Drugs like sodium valpronate and phenatoin may be used. If unable to take orally, then it can be given by subcutaneous route. Midazolam injection, though it is injection, that uh, liquid can be given by sublingual route and ex excellent as an anticonvulsion and sedative. And even diazepam can be given rectally. Many patients, particularly cancer patients, bleed profusely during the terminal phase of the illness. We have seen head and neck cancer patient who has got a cancer tumor in the neck which is invading into the big vessel and suddenly the vessel burst and patient breathes profusely till he dies. In a particular situation, this must be anticipated and the family prepared to cope if it is happens. As I said, the tumor in neck invading into blood vessels. So, family should be informed that such situation can occur. By previous reports of CT scan and all, you know that this tumor is lying on a big vessel and patient may die because of severe hemorrhage. In this case, patient and family should be aware about it. If possible, secure the IV access and give fluid or whatever available at your resource. Non-drug measure is just cover the site with a dark towel. So, it, it will reduce the distress due to sight of the blood, reduce the distress of the family and patient himself. Stabilize the blood pressure as far as uh, possible and uh, st steady pressure may be applied. Try to apply pressure or from where it is bleeding. Rapid, you can sedate the patient by IV midazolam or midazolam given orally or ketamine. A supportive presence of is helpful to both persons. So, in such situation, you remain with the patient and family and this will be of great help. In terminally dying patient, give support to family. That is also equally important. Explain what is happening and what is likely to happen. Anticipate situation and prepare them to face and cope up with them. Many situation you can anticipate like a patient having lung cancer. They are likely to go into the breathlessness which is not which cannot be relieved by whatever you are doing. So, explain the family that uh, this patient may not be helped much. Be available to listen, explain and answer their question. Assure that symptom control will continue to keep the person comfortable. We are, we, try, we are trying our best by controlling his symptoms. Fulfill wishes of person as far as possible. Most of the time uh, uh, in hospice setup, when the patient is admitted for long time and he becomes weaker and weaker and about to die. Uh, sometimes he says, uh, tells the wish that I wish to go home and die uh, and see my children. 
in that case we do discharge the patient and allow him to die at home in presence of family and loved one. Address religious concern and arrange extra help, organize family and enlist help of local doctor. If patient is dying at home, you can take help of local doctor and their family physician. So, in care of dying, ensure that the dying person is comfortable by addressing physical, emotional and spiritual issues. Make the end of life peaceful and dignified by care and support given to person and family, make the memory of the death as positive as possible. Try to give them good death and make them comfortable. Thank you very much. Thank you.